uh, is David Fatal, um, and he's from uh, Leia 3D, and his, uh, session, his speech will be on holographic reality. So We're talking a, a lot about virtual reality, augmented reality these days, and what I want to present to you is a concept that we call holographic reality, which is really, we want to, it's a strong belief that virtual world is good, you know, on, on headset, it's very immersive. But there's a lot of application, actually a lot more, uh, that could be on headset, that could be on, on, on regular screen, with the usual way that you actually interact with the digital world, which is when you want it, you turn it on, you interact with it, and then when you're done, you just look away, and then you're kind of back to your regular life. And, and that you can't do with a headset. So what I want to talk about, so um, I'm, I'm David Fatal, right? So I'm the uh, founder and CEO of a, a startup uh, from Menlo Park. Uh, called Leia Inc. We're a spin-off from, uh, from HP, um, and I'm going to be describing a little bit of our vision, uh, our technology, and uh, some of the applications, everything in less than 20 minutes, okay? So, so the vision of, of, of the company is this, right? Um, I think today all of our information is, you know, obviously uh, transitioning from the physical world to the digital world, our communication, our knowledge, uh, the way we entertain, the way we work, everything is now on servers in the cloud, um, yet, you know, we're still made of, uh, of flesh and bones, and, and, and you know, we, we still essentially need to experience uh, all that information in, in, a, in a physical form, which means we need to find ways, intuitive ways, to bring back the digital world into our own, okay? This is fundamentally what you do with a, a 2D display, right? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to talk at a very abstract level here. A 2D display takes bits and bytes and essentially materializes it into a 2D image on the screen. Possibly with a touch screen, you can interact with it, and, and, and you're getting essentially uh, to interact with the digital world. And that's the way that we've been interacting with technology. Uh, it's been about 10 years now on your, on your iPhone and so on. Um, obviously, you know, the same way that we transition from black and white TV to color TV, it's been a while, it's been predicted we will transition from, uh, you know, flat screens to uh, 3D screens, okay? Uh, the world is not flat, so if you want to get a more intuitive interaction with the digital world, you s should somehow be able to render the digital world in, a, in, a, in, a, in the third dimension. Um, so recently, right, there's been a lot of craze about VR, AR, and they do provide that, that immersion. It's actually very easy to do 3D. Uh, it's quite easy to do 3D with a VR, AR headset because you just have two different displays that are following your eyes at all times. Uh, but as I said in my mini introduction earlier, right, they come at the expense of having to wear uh, bulky eyewear, which impairs mobility, social interactions. Um, it's quite funny, actually, uh, VR, AR, what happens is that you get to collaborate and to interact with people on other continents, but you're actually isolated from the person next to you, right? So if you want to uh, maybe enjoy, uh, you know, a football game in a bar, uh, usually you want to be close to the people around you, you're not going to isolate yourself with the, with the headset. When you walk in the street and you want to place a quick phone call, uh, you don't want to, want to have to wear a headset with a mini computer attached to your, to your belt you know, at all times. Um, emerging solution, right, is, 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 is the topic, I think, of this, of this conference, is uh, uh, you know, stereoscopic 3D displays, in particular naked eye 3D displays. Uh, that are able to render a, the digital world in 3D in a completely unobstructive way, just from a screen. Uh, however, due to restriction in field of view, or in the eye tracking case, it's, there's a little bit of lag and so on and so forth, this, they still do not offer the total freedom of movement that you would expect from interacting with technology, right? So there's actually no good solution today, and, and what, I, what I'm trying to present here, uh, what we're developing at Leia, is this quote-unquote holographic uh, platform that is interactive, mobile, intuitive, and that essentially lets you interact with, with holographic quote-unquote objects from, uh, from, from any position in an unrestricted way. And so this is that platform that we call holographic reality, okay? Uh, so when I say holograms, I don't want to get into the old debate about what's a hologram. You know, hologram in the broad sense that it's, it's an object that looks and feels like a hologram, which means it pops out of the screen, and when you move around it, it has very smooth parallax transition, and you get to see all kind of perspective around it without jumps and anything like that. So think of it as a very good, uh, good uh, multi-view 3D display, for example. Okay. And what we're building at Leia is not only we have that capability to render uh, 3D images very, very nicely with very smooth sense of parallax, but we augment it with so-called uh, hover touch technology, 
that lets essentially senses your finger above the screen without having to touch the screen. So we can interact with the holograms essentially without uh, touching the screen. Some of you might have gotten a demo yesterday. I think we were there at the, uh, the demo session. I think you could manipulate a skeleton by just you know, moving your, your finger around the screen. It's also in our ambition to integrate uh, so-called haptics. Uh, and this is essentially a ultrasonic technology. You emit ultrasound from the side of the display. If you know where your finger is located, you can actually make the ultrasound interfere in phase under your finger, and you'll, you'll feel a physical sense of touch. So at that point, you'll be able not only to visualize holographic content and interact with it, but you'll be able to actually feel it. Okay? So this is, this is the digital world that is literally materialized into the real world. And that's basically what we believe is going to be the user interface of the future. Might it be on your mobile phone, might be in the car, in your home, at the office. And the vision for, you know, from five to 10 years is our world is going to be filled with displays. Every single door, every single table, every single uh, you know, place in your car, in your home, at the office, in public places, is going to be filled with displays and interactive displays where you can summon the digital world, do some kind of operation, and then get on with your life. All right? So that's, that's what we're trying to build. So a little bit about the product today, what it is exactly. Uh, we managed to do that with a regular LCD technology. We're 100% compatible with the current LCD supply chain in Asia. And so what we have is we take an LCD display. We actually keep the standard LCD panel on top. You know, commodity technology, low margin, so on and so forth. Uh, there's a bunch of vendors in Asia that you can work with. Uh, and essentially what we do is we replace the backlight, and we replace it with our, with our own backlight that we call a multi-view backlight that has essentially some diffractive pattern on it. Okay? So it's a proprietary diffractive pattern that is able to take side illumination light and create what, what, has, be, you know, what has become to be known as, as a light field. So we create a light field, a static light field, underneath the LCD display. So we create a bunch of colored light rays. We know where these light rays come from. They come from different locations. They propagate in different direction. And they actually have a very controlled, and I'll come back to that, they have a very controlled angular spread. Um, so when these light rays come through the LCD, we can, we can modulate their intensity. And what you get is a, is a multi-view 3D image that is not only full parallax in a wide angle, but it actually very, has very smooth view transitions. So you don't get the usual jumps that you can see with maybe lenticular uh, or other type of displays. It's actually very, very smooth, OK? Uh, and because it's, because it's wide angle and because it's very smooth, it lets, you, uh, it lets you essentially interact. It lets you move around the display uh, very comfortably, and it lets you interact with it, right? So that's the difference between having a narrow field of view and having a big field of view is when you have a big field of view, you forget about the technology, and you, you, just, you just go on and, and, and you know, go on with your life and essentially interact with the device without having to worry, oh, am I going to lose the image or not? And the last layer that faces the user is essentially the LCD display itself, right? So unlike a lenticular technology where you have to add a bunch of lenses on top, you're actually facing the LCD display. So we can use right away. Uh, touch technologies, hover touch, you know, capacitive touch, uh, and then we'll be compatible with haptics as well, uh, essentially without having to, to, to change much of, of the technology. So that's the, you know, essentially the, uh, the product, and now I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the, uh, the backlight. Uh, but first, I'm just going to talk about what kind of data needs to be fed into the display. Uh, it is still, this is still a light field display. This is still a, you know, a essentially multi-view multi 3D display. So you don't have to compute diffraction fringes or anything like that. The technology is diffraction-based, but the diffraction pattern is fixed. It doesn't have to change. And it turns out all you have to feed the display are the equivalent of, of a certain number of views that are computed you know, uh, on a computer or acquired through cameras, uh, for example. Um, so the very noticeable fact is we can, we can, the, the, I don't like to call it crosstalk, but the, the, way the, the way you transition from one view to the next is a very precise function of the, the diffraction pattern, and we can tune it to whatever degree we want. So we can 
completely kill the crosstalk. We can have zero crosstalk, or we can introduce some crosstalk to smooth out the transition. And this is done in the hardware. So that idea of a multi-view backlight came from, actually, I was a, in another life, I was a researcher at HP Labs. Um, and we actually made the cover of Nature for that in 2013. And you see another aspect that I haven't mentioned is the backlight is completely transparent. So we can create holograms that are coming, you know, that are, look like they're emerging from a transparent piece of glass. So it's, it's, it's quite magical. So here you have piece of glass is illuminated from the side, um, and it's essentially creating this, by our standard today, this is a horrible image. It's very blurry, everything. But that was, you know, the proof of concept back then. Um, and because it's transparent, what it allows you to do is also, if we were to work with the uh, transparent modulator, we could do a holographic display, 3D display that is, that is see-through, transparent, okay? Uh, which, of course, you can do with a parallax barrier uh, display or, or, or a lenticular type display, right? So we can, we're compatible with see-through and 3D at the same time. So the, the, the principle is this, right? It's, uh, it's basically, we call it diffraction of guided wave. So if you look a little bit inside the, uh, the backlight, we have a side illumination. This, is, this, is, you know, this doesn't have all the full information on purpose, but just to give you a gist of how it works. You couple light from the side as, as in a normal backlighting system, and you have this diffractive pattern that can essentially control exactly how the light is extracted. So every time the light interacts with the diffractive pattern, a little bit is essentially diffracted there in this, in this mode. And then most of it is just reflected, and then reflected, and then has the chance to interact again. So it's, it's very efficient. In the end, we, can, we manage to use most of the light in the, uh, in the light guide. And as I was saying, we control not only the direction and the location of these light rays, but we control exactly how they, uh, their, their angular distribution. And that's very important. We can even use the same diffraction pattern to create two light rays with actually arbitrary uh, direction. Sometimes we use that to increase the density of pixels and the density of views available and so on and so forth. Okay? So it's very versatile. And a great advantage compared to a lenticular display, for example, is that uh, diffraction doesn't care you know, how tight the angle uh, of the ray uh, is going to be. You know, if you want to send a light ray in a very grazing direction, you can. It is it's the same as sending it up. With a lenticular display, you need to be close to axis. Uh, you know, if you deviate too much from the, uh, from the parallax approximation, uh, you're going to get blurry images, but here you don't care. So as I mentioned before, it turns out that this, this diffractive pattern is going to act, is going to diffract the light that is guided in the light guide, but for light that is coming straight through, it has no diffraction effect whatsoever, so the light can, can go through completely unaffected. So that has to do with the transverse momentum of light. Light that is in the light guide has a very large transverse momentum, which means that in order to diffract it, you need a feature size that is pretty small. And when the light comes with you know, near normal incidence with almost you know, zero degree angle, it has a very small amount of momentum there. And, and, and this, this essentially, this grading gives too much of a momentum kick in either direction, and then there's no propagating order that corresponds to it. So again, it's completely transparent. We can give again, we have full freedom. So even if you work with the uh, square array of, of, of LCD pixel, you can still define, we ha you have the, uh, the freedom to define an arbitrary uh, set of views, right? So for example, here was an example, an early example where we build, a, uh, it was a hexagonal, a hexagonal uh, set of views, right? Through a square LCD panel, if you wanted to, just to show you the, the freedom. And again, what I alluded to that's very important to understand is that each view, we can, we can control all aspects of the radiation pattern. So this one, we wanted to have a flat top, and then we wanted to control uh, a certain, essentially, amount of overlap between the views to create a certain smoothness effect. And then we also wanted, we also wanted the image to kind, of, to kind of die down. So this had eight views horizontal, view one through eight. We wanted view one and view eight to kind of die down uh, so that there was, you know, this is the next, this is the essentially, this is the next view here that would be view number nine, and it's completely suppressed. So when you look at the display and you move from the left to the right, 
you see a large amount of parallax, 60 degree field of view. And then if you move too far, instead of seeing a jump back to view one, you, you know, just the, uh, essentially the brightness decreases and, and, and you fade away just very gracefully, right? So it doesn't jump. And at no point you have the sensation of having this inverted 3D, you know, sensation where the left eye image goes to the right eye and vice versa. So it's actually, it, it's very pleasant. Uh, so there's one, there's, there's one usually uh, pain with uh, diffraction is how to, to deal with color. So everything I've, meant, I've, I've described so far works well with one color, but now if you take the usual diffraction or holographic kind of configuration, if you send white light on a diffraction pattern, uh, most of you know that what you will get is, well, first of all, most of the light will go through uh, un, un, undiffracted. So we solve that by illuminating with guided light. There is just there's, there is no zero order uh, propagating order. Uh, so so this never happens for us. But uh, which which the thing that could be more disastrous is the first diffracted order gives you a lot of a lot of uh, color dispersion. So essentially, uh, and actually it's uh, it's drawn wrong here. The uh, the red should be here and the blue should be there. Uh, but essentially, this should completely break down the colors. You should have, you know, a color in, a, you know, in one, one certain uh, range of angles, and then another color there, another color there. Most of our patents actually uh, have to do with how we deal with that problem. And we have, we illuminate the light guide in a special way, uh, with either with white light or different color of light. But we have to be very careful how we illuminate the system. And what we get are actually light rays that are possibly coming from different position, but, but that, they curry, that, are, that, that are parallel. So they define the same exact set of views. Um, so that when you look at our display, you don't see any color bleeding. It's, if you want to create a white object, it's perfectly white, including at the edges. Okay. Uh, that's the really hard part about diffraction. Okay. So that's, that's where all the, all the work has to, has to go when you look in the detail to have a high quality display. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So now it's just a little bit of a, uh, not a marketing, but I want to describe. So uh, the company, uh, just, just, just to tell you what it, what it takes, right? Uh, so we founded two years ago. Uh, we spun off HP Labs. We're about 25 employees, and we have operation in Menlo Park. Palo Alto, believe it or not, we actually we bought an ASML stepper, and that's how we prototype all of our displays. So the stepper is an optical lithography tool that can, we, have a, we can go down to 85 nanometer resolution. Okay, so we have 12-inch wafers. So any display that is small that, that would fit in a 12-inch wafer, we can prototype in about less than a week. Just the, the time it takes to get a, a mask from Topan, which is very fast. Um, and essentially, so we, we prototype and we manufacture the backlight still in Palo Alto, and then we have a pilot assembly line in Suzhou that aligns the backlight to the LCD panel. And from that pilot line, we transfer the process to uh, the module assembly house in, uh, in, in Asia, usually in China. Uh, so it's, it's, it's quite heavy operations, but you know, it's, it's hardware, so we have to do it. Another uh, mention is we're able to use the existing 3D ecosystem. You probably heard uh, the previous speaker, Achin, on, uh, on, on, on RealSense. Uh, so we use RealSense. I show you how to map facial expression onto uh, 3D avatars, for example. Uh, so we were on CNN recently. We can take your facial expression and map them onto a monkey. So it looks like you know we're transforming you into a monkey, and it's it's 3D and it's really nice. Um, so we have a Unity plugin that lets us take any Unity content and and essentially make it compatible for our platform. So you can play Unity games on our platform. Uh, we do leap motion. We have WebGL, so you can uh, go and have fun online. So most of our demos are rendered in the browser today, and it's it's, it's quick and easy to uh, to program in JavaScript. So that's an example. I think if you were there last night, some of you might have uh, uh, maybe got to play. So this is like a this is a, a CAT scan of uh, of uh, actually it was a former colleague of mine at HP and turned into a 3D model of his spine. And you get to interact with it with the, with a leap motion in real time. You can you know you can manipulate the hologram. It's quite fun. This is the demo that I mentioned. This is essentially what you would see. Uh, you're basically in front of the display. We have a real sense unit that is capturing your facial expression, and in real time it is essentially mapping this expression onto this this 3D hologram of a monkey. So that's quite fun. And I want to leave you with that uh, last image of. You know, the vision again, it's, it's the digital world materialized. And I think so, you know, this is really meant to be the user interface of the future. And uh, essentially, 
Hope we'll get there soon. So thank you for your attention. Thanks.